Welcome to the fields of Invernessshire. What happened to Perthshire, I hear you ask? Well, I'm not metal detecting today, but there is a metal detecting theme. Now, I'm in an incredibly historical place in Scotland, in or near Inverness, in the north of Scotland. And if you look behind me, you might recognise these little red flags. This is the front line of the Battle of Culloden, fought between the Jacobites and the British on the 16th of April 1746. And these red flags represent the front line of the British troops. Now, I happen to be in the area as a result of my other job, which is as a tour guide, and I'd heard that there is an archaeological investigation underway on the front line. Now, this is the third year that they've had an archaeological investigation here at the Battle of Culloden. And the Battle of Culloden was the last pitched battle ever fought in the United Kingdom. It was fought between the Duke of Cumberland, who was in charge of the British government forces, and Bonnie Prince Charlie, who was in charge of the Jacobites. And that is the visitor centre set into the a landscape there, quite low. Uh, to the left of it is a little thatched cottage called Old Liana Cottage. You'll hear some screaming around me as well, because that's the archaeological investigation. So, as I say, they've been doing it here for three years, and this is the first time that they've made it as far as the front line. The previous two digs they've done in the last two years have been where the second line was, which was near that little cottage. So the front line is these red flags, and on the opposing side of the battlefield, very, very difficult to see, and very, very far away, is the blue flags. You see those white flag poles, uh, flag poles there? That's the front line of the Jacobites. So look how far they had to travel for a start. And right here is where the thick of the battle took place. Around about 6,000 Jacobites against around about 7,000 British troops. Now people would often say it was a Scotland-England war, but it wasn't. It was very much a civil war and a European war because on the Jacobite side you had Scots, you had Irish, you had French, you even had some English. And in contrast, on the British side you had English, you had Scots, you had Welsh, you had Irish, and you even had some Hessians, some German mercenaries as well. So it was very much a mixed continental affair not just Scotland against England. And what they've been doing for the last five days is they've been digging these little test pits, a one meter by one meter square, and they've been using metal detectors as well to see if they can find any items or any artifacts. And they have, they've found musket balls. They've also they've found some grape shot as well, which is the uh, basically like massive shotgun cartridges that they would place in the barrel of a cannon and they would fire these canisters like massive shotguns and each canister contained hundreds of lead balls so like a massive massive shotgun going off so there's not a uh, there's not been any epic finds in terms of um, gold or silver, but you wouldn't expect that. This was a battlefield, people didn't bring gold and silver. It was everyday belongings, so they've discovered things like buckles, musket balls, some shot from canister shot, as I say. In a typical Scottish weather, it's windy and it's, it's rough. A few fragments of pottery and stone. But they have found something incredibly old. 
which massively predates the battle, probably by somewhere between four and 6,000 years. As you can see, a lot of the holes haven't been properly excavated yet. I'm gonna go around this man because he's doing some surveying. I don't want to walk in front of him. So I'll loop around them and come back in the other direction. But you can see some of the holes haven't been properly uh, excavated yet because they need to go all the way down to the, the natural layer, which is about anywhere between one and two feet down. So they've got a bit to go there yet. So you can see by these red flags that they're literally on the front left flank of the front line. These individual stones, they mark out the various different regiments. In this case, at this point, to the left of this point, stood Cobham, the Argyllshire men. So the Duke of Argyll, the clan Campbell, but there were others. But there were many Scots who fought for the British. So you can see in this one some of the natural starting to come through. So those sort of light brown colours. Those patches, that's the natural clay and sediments that's been left behind by the glaciers. So when you reach that layer, unless there's something cut into it, then you know it is a, it's a barren hole. This one again, down to the natural level. So what they're doing as well is they're getting lots of local people, school children, metal detectorists, clubs and so on, involved as well. A few stones here but I don't think it's any kind of structure. I think that's just stones that have been deposited by the glacial layer. I think this is the most interesting one here. No, it's not. It's the one next to it. This one you can see they've had to go fairly deep in order to get down to the, the, uh, the glacial layer. So it shows you how varied the natural soil level is in this area, but just over here is the most interesting discovery. So this is a pile of stones, this is a structure. You can see that natural clay layer on the left hand side and here, the orangey colour coming through. Um, but here you've got a structure of some kind. And within that structure they found a flint. Now Scotland doesn't have or has very little natural flint. Um, so it's probably flint that's come up from the middle or the south of England, and it's indicative that this may well be a structure that's somewhere between four and 6,000 years old, from the Bronze Age back to the Neolithic or the Stone Age. So there is burning, you can see quite a lot of blackening around it. So some people are saying maybe it's a hearth, a fireplace for a building, if it was a hearth, well, it's a pile of stone, so that doesn't make any sense, because a hearth would be circular, with uh, with no stones in the middle. So what it might be is possibly a kiln, maybe for baking, or for metalwork, or such like. And uh, it's collapsed later on, and that's the reason for it's just a big pile of stones. So they're going to pick through that over the next few days, and see if they can find out a little bit more. So there you go. These little yellow and red flags that are marked out in a little one meter square. These are the points that they'll be excavating over the next couple of days. So who knows what else they're gonna find. But as I say, it's right in the thick of the battle. So maybe, just maybe, there's gonna be something special is gonna come out. But either way, it's a very rare event that there's ever an excavation here at the heart of the Battle of Culloden. These are some of the highlights of what's been found. This is a lead ball from a canister shot, which would have been fired from the British cannons as the Jacobites bore down on top of them. And that little stone feature, which is a possible kiln, produced this tiny little fragment of flint, which is probably Bronze Age, or Neolithic. Now this is the only coin that's been found so far. 
Um, unfortunately, they wouldn't let me put the bendy thumb on it, but maybe they'll be able to identify it. This is a fragment of buckle. I think it's a shoe buckle, but it's going to need to be cleaned up. So this may well have been worn either by one of the Jacobites or by one of the British soldiers. This is another canister shot. You can see the size of it. Unbelievable carnage would have been caused by these being fired at the Highlanders, at the Jacobites from a distance of just a few dozen metres at most. And these are some more pieces of lead that have been discovered. Musket balls um, that have either been dropped at the top there in the middle or either side which have been fired and splintered into horrible shapes. And this is one of the older finds. This is a beautiful piece of flint, which is probably Neolithic or Bronze Age. So around about four to maybe 6,000 years old. And another beautiful piece of flint from a similar period, Neolithic, Bronze Age. And it shows that people have been living in this landscape for many, many thousands of years. This is a little fragment of a clay pipe, a smoking pipe. Now, we don't know for sure if it dates to the battle or whether it's later, but it's certainly going to be from the 17, 18 or very, very early 1900s. And this is another fragment of flint, again, four, five, six thousand years old. Incredible that they were able to even spot this in muddy ground. This is a little fragment of green glass. It looks like it's probably from a bottle, but we've no idea whether it dates to the 1740s or 1800s. And this is a pretty impressive find. This is a shoe buckle fragment, and it may well be Georgian in period, so it could well relate to the British army, or maybe even a Jacobite soldier. But if this could talk, what stories it could tell. Well, there you go. That's a wee bit different. If I'd have known, I'd have brought my metal detector, but maybe next year, because they say that they're going to be back again, and what they're going to do is they're going to move further into the heart of the battle. So I'm sure over future years, the closer they get to the, to the main area where the fighting took place, the more items and possible personal belongings that they'll discover. So um, very interesting, and just a wee bit different. I tell you what, it's made me itching to get my metal detector out. I really do wish that I could metal detect here. My goodness, what a what an honour and a privilege that would be, especially seen as about 500 of my ancestors, Clan Ranald of Clan MacDonald, fought here for Bonnie Prince Charlie on the 16th of April, 1746. And one of my ancestors, Neil McKechn, he acted as, um, as Bonnie Prince Charlie's right-hand man in the aftermath of the battle when Bonnie Prince Charlie was on the run for five months all around Scotland before he eventually got a ship back to France. Well, I hope you enjoyed and maybe next time we should be on a dig. So take care and thanks for watching.